Hey everyone, Shabby Gaming here, and welcome to another episode of our WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. So, tonight is going to be our next episode of Monday Night Raw for the current day roster. As you can see, we're only a couple of weeks now away from the payback pay-per-view, so that'd be pretty interesting to see. Uh, but let's have a look at tonight's card. We're going to start things off with a continuing rivalry between Dolph Ziggler and Luke Harper. Then we're going to see a tag team number one contendership match as the New Day takes on uh, the Lucha Dragons. We're going to see the Cruiserweight Champion Neville taking on Kevin Owens in a Fool's Count Anywhere match. Tyler Breeze takes on the Intercontinental Champion Daniel Bryan. Another rivalry match as Rusev takes on Cesaro. We're also going to see Randy Orton taking on the newest member of the Authority, Sheamus. And he will be accompanied to the ring by Seth Rollins. And talking of Sheamus, Roman Reigns made the challenge to... Uh, not to Sheamus, sorry. Roman Reigns made the challenge to Seth Rollins. For the, um, for the World Heavyweight Championship. And now, Seth did not want to take the opportunity, but Reigns managed to uh, managed to wrangle the authority up to a point where they've told him that if he wins this tag team match later on this evening against Kane and the Big Show, he can have that championship match at payback. But we don't know who his partner is going to be. Of course, Dean Ambrose taken out a few weeks back. So who will it be joining Roman Reigns here this evening in the main event? So without further ado, let's get cracking with our first match. And here is that first match is Dolph Ziggler versus Luke Harper. And here we see Luke Harper in the ring already. And I've already seen this cutscene because the game, my first recording of the day and the game is glitched out on me already. I can't believe it. It's just terrible. It's just, it's just so um, predictable as well. But yeah, this seems to be glitched out completely every time we have this cutscene. So I'm going to have to play this match. I'm going to play it as Luke Harper since he has got the upper hand. Right, so how do I do this? Right, so I'm going to play it as Luke Harper. And here we go. Yeah, so basically I started the match off a minute ago and Luke Harper just walked into the corner and stared at Ziggler and Ziggler does not come out of the corner until Luke Harper does some damage. So it was a bit of a bit of an annoying one, really. But whoever wins in this one, well, it doesn't really matter who wins in this one, really. It's still going to progress the rivalry to a certain level anyway. Let's see Ziggler there just... Breaking the arm down of, of Luke Harper. And maybe I should play a few more of the matches. Things like things like um, Hell in a Cell matches. And ones where there's specific results that we need to happen for, uh, for specific reasons. Such as for feuds that I'm doing manually and things like that. I want to try and lead the game as much as it is. Because I don't want it to be obvious if I'm playing the match. It might become a bit more obvious who's going to win. Saying that I'm not very good at this game. Although I am playing on Legendary and I have won two out of two matches I've, I've wrestled. So I'm not doing too badly. By any stretch of the imagination. But I, I don't want it to become too obvious who's going to win. That's the reason why I do AI versus AI really. But I think for some matches where we want certain things to happen. It might be worth me, worth me playing. And like if it is a six man hell in a cell. Then at least I can break out of the cell. Both guys back into the ring now. Big clothesline in the corner there by Luke Harper. And Ziggler catches him and there's still quite a lot of reversals in this game. I know the later in the match it gets, I think the less chance there are for reversals. Oh, I don't know how to do this, I must admit. I didn't read this before, so I don't quite know how to do it. I don't actually know what I'm doing, to be brutally honest. Did I break out of that? I'm not sure. Well, I'm out of it now anyway. And Ziggler catches me straight away. And there's a snap suplex. Maybe I need to do a little bit of research on how to do these, uh, how to do these mini games because I haven't got a clue. I tried matching it. I tried doing the opposite, and uh, none of them seem to work on a pin. There we go. Well, this is not too bad, I don't think. Okay. Oh, it does it for you this time. Well, I got out of that without even being a one count. And a big boot. I think I actually caught the gut of Ziggler. Probably the painful thing to do. I don't know why I moved towards the corner of the ring to use that. Must threw Ziggler into the ropes. Now Harper again. Well, Ziggler caught him in the front, chanting our blow across the back. Is that a reversal by me? Which is pretty good there. I'm, I'm quite happy the fact I'm getting the reversals because I've got everything turned off. It means that I've also got the reversal triggers turned off as well. So it means that I'm, I'm just hitting it at the right moment in time, just thinking. 
which is probably the best way of doing it, rather than just spamming. You can't spam reversal in this game anyway, because of the uh, you only get a certain amount you can use. Uh, I wonder if I have got a signature on the finisher. I've got a finisher. There it is, the big discus lariat. And I got the big discus lariat because you um, because it started off the match pretty uh, pretty aggressively with that cutscene. I think you always start with a signature. So in for the pin goes Luke Harper. One, two, and three, and picks up the victory over Dolph Ziggler. That initial attack during Ziggler's entrance was enough for Luke Harper to pick up the victory. Now, yeah, again, it's this this is a something I've had a few times now. The attack before the match like that. And it always seems to do the same thing. You have the, the aggressor stands there just staring down at the person he's attacked. And the person he's attacked won't move until um, until the aggressor's done something. So you end up just two people staring at each other. I'll, I'll, I'll more likely end up cutting out the match beforehand anyway. But as you would have seen from Unforgiven yesterday, even the, the Elimination Chamber match was full of so many glitches. It's, it's such a, a poor excuse at the moment. They... Considering the amount of money that people spent on this, like I, I paid fifty quid for the game, and then I paid the um, was it the twenty five thirty pound for the season pass, and the amount of glitches still on this game is just not acceptable, really. The amount of money that people spend, they should have this game at a much higher level than this, and the fact it's been out for so long and there's still so many glitches awaiting to be looked at is a bit of a it's a bit of a strange one as well. But hopefully, we'll get another patch pretty soon, which will clear up quite a few of the glitches. But a great win here for Luke Harper to continue this feud. Luke Harper, one of the slowest winning animations there is. And I really like Harper. We're going to get a lot more out of Harper, I think, in the future. And here is the update on the rivalry. Rising tensions. Hostility is starting to grow between rivals Luke Harper and Dolph Ziggler. Um, Ziggler is on a momentum boost. And Luke Harper has now got a hot streak. And Harper's become slightly more respectful and slightly more bold from that match. And slightly more egotistical as well. So, uh, it's a good match for Harper to get that hot streak. It's really going to help him out in this feud. And here is our next match. It is going to be the New Day. Xavier Woods and, and Kofi Kingston taking on the Lucha Dragons. And, of course, Biggie Langston will be at ringside. So, the winners of this match will go on to face off against the primetime players at Payback for the Tag Team Championships. I've not done this already, have I? No. I have it, but the Usos did defeat the primetime players last week. But I just, I'm a little bit against having the Usos as the um, as the tag team no more contenders because basically I just keep forgetting which one's which, and it's really awkward for me. Basically, <laughs> I know that sounds a bit bad, but there you go. Kofi Kingston He's on the outside. That's Xavier Woods in the ring, isn't it? So I, I I had this problem yesterday when I was doing recordings. So I'm having a few pop-ups on my on my computer at the moment. It keeps coming across the top of the um, the recording program, so I keep losing keep losing sight of what's actually going on. But hopefully, I think I fixed it more or less now. Um, it's just a dodgy program on my computer that I thought I needed, but evidently I don't. It's just causing more problems than than help. So I think I'm going to get rid of that, and that should cause that should uh, clear all the problems off. Xavier Woods now with the front chance. We now bring in. Kalisto against these ropes. And a big super kick there by Xavier Woods. Kalisto goes down. And uh, both these teams will be itching to get themselves a, an opportunity at the Tag Team Championships. Of course, Kalisto and Sin Cara haven't really done much to earn this uh, No More Contendership match, but I just like them. I'm a big fan of the Lucha Dragons. I, I watched Kalisto quite a lot in the, uh, in the indie scene as, of course, the Samurai Del Sol. So, yeah, that's, that's been really good. And I'd like to see them get an opportunity to go for the Tag Team Championships. And the New Day, of course, is a team that are just... They're just out there a bit, aren't they, really? Everyone sort of enjoys the New Day, enjoys their work. Northern Lights Suplex there by Xavier Woods as well. Kofi Kingston managed to use a chair there while Biggie Langston was distracting the referee. Sorry, I've got another thing pop up on my limited screen right in the middle. 
But this this is a a great bit of teamwork there by the new there. It just shows how useful it is to have the man at the ringside there. That's a uh, it's interesting. I like that. The referee's finally noticed the chair and now slides it out of the ring. But I think uh, the damage had already been done on Kalisto. And Kalisto really needs to make a tag out at some point. I think he's been the match now for the entirety of it. There's the jawbreaker by Kalisto. Kofi Kingston dropping to his back on the outside. On the outside. Seeing Karen out of the front chance. Serena sending Kofi Kingston over the top and crashing to the ground below. Stamping on the stomach of Kofi Kingston that brings him back up to his feet. But Kingston catches Sin Cara with a jawbreaker on the outside. Now throwing Sin Cara into the barricade as well. And now there's a hurricanrana by Kofi Kingston. Kingston bringing Sin Cara back up. But Sin Cara with the head scissors. Slides back into the ring. Referee, I think he's up to a five count. Now a six. Kofi taking a few extra seconds. Straight back into the ring and Sin Cara catches him there with a the suplex. Into the pin. It's only enough for a two count. Sin Cara went for the drop kick to the back of Kofi, but Kofi caught him in the neck breaker. Trying to hear what the crowd's chanting now. I couldn't quite make it out. The teamwork there as Kofi Kingston just held Sin Cara in place as Xavier Woods caught him with the kick. Of course, we've got some big matches for you this evening, actually. It's quite a nice looking card. Uh, we've got Neville taking on Owens next in a false count anywhere match. Uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I didn't make it a false count anywhere match. I think I must have just changed the participants and it was already a false count anywhere. Uh, of course, we've got Tyler Breeze taking on the Intercontinental Champion, Daniel Bryan. We've got Rusev continuing his uh, feud against Cesaro. Uh, that, of course, is going to be for the United States Championship um, at the Payback pay-per-view. Randy Orton takes on Sheamus, who will be accompanied to the ring by his uh, fellow authority teammate, Seth Rollins. And then, of course, in our main event, if Roman Reigns wins, he gets a shot at Seth Rollins for the, uh, the World Heavyweight Championship at Payback. Uh, of course, it's going to be Reigns and a mystery partner taking on uh, the, the team from the authority of the shape of Kane and Big Show. Now, who will it be? Who's going to team up with Roman Reigns? Like we said, we saw Reigns' main friend, Dean Ambrose, taken out a couple of weeks back. We... Uh, he got a big boot to the side of the head against the ring post by Sheamus. He was uh, signed off with concussion. Not expected back. Kofi Kingston now taken. Kalisto up top and in comes uh, Xavier Woods. I think that was actually the big ending. And it looks like the New Day going to get it. And the New Day do get it. Great teamwork there by the New Day. And for the first time, they actually used a tag team finisher and Kofi Kingston stayed in the ring. There was Kofi Kingston using the chair that was slid into the ring by Biggie Langston. And there was the pin by Kofi, but it was not enough to finish off the Lucha Dragons. This was the point where the referee was up to a six count. Kofi took a couple of extra seconds on the outside, knew he had the time to recuperate a little bit, came back into the ring, and Sin Cara caught him straight away into that snap suplex. Went for the pin, but again, that was only enough for a two count. And have we just missed the big finale? No, we haven't. 
Here's Kofi. Hitting the boom drop. Straight across the gut of Sin Cara. But again, it was not enough to finish the match off. Only enough for a two. And there it is, the combination. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be done with um, with Biggie Langston because it's the big la it's the big ending with an elbow drop to the uh, to the back as well. I think it should be Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, but great tag team move. And you see Kofi Kingston hitting the monkey flip on Sin Cara to take him out of the uh, equation as well. So the New Day are going to get themselves a tag team championship match at Payback against, of course, the current tag team champions, the primetime players. And here's our next match of the evening. It's going to be Neville taking on Kevin Owens in a Fool's Count Anywhere match. And here we go. So like I said, Fool's Count Anywhere match between these two. Of course, Neville is our current cruiserweight champion but both of these guys will have higher aspirations i think they could both be potentially looking at or definitely intercontinental championship and united states championship at some point and i think owens is definitely a a, a strong contender for the for the wwe and world heavyweight championship as well but i think neville could also squeeze into that mold as well i think neville is a fantastic wrestler i don't often think gets the uh gets the plaudits he deserves I don't think they really get him over in America, especially because they probably can't understand a word he's saying with that strong Geordie accent. But there you go. But uh, yeah, I, I really like Neville, and I think he's got a he's got a big future as Kevin Owens as a table. But still, again, in these sort of uh, conditions, tables don't generally get used the way that tables should get used in this game. They generally get used more for um, as blunt objects to hit people with. Which is a little bit annoying. I wish the game would have the mechanics to... Oh no, Kevin Owens has put the table in the corner. Looks like they've developed the mechanics slightly to try and improve the table system. They said if um, if the table is brought out in a match like this, I think they should try and put each other through the table. And looks like that's what Kevin Owens is going to try and do here. Kevin Owens bringing Neville up. And power bombs him through the table. And there's me talking absolute nonsense. As the game has got that mechanic in there. But it was not even a one count. Not even a one count there for Kevin Owens as he powerbombed Neville through the table. But that's great to see. I'm really happy about that. The fact that they've actually... Because it was one thing that really annoyed me last year on 2K15. And it's annoyed me a bit on this game. And it's the first time I've ever seen anyone on this universe man actually set the table up and use it as a weapon. The way it's intended. So that's really good. I like that. I like that a lot. And what's Neville going to go for? And it's the same with a ladder really as well. I'd like them to use the ladder... A bit more innovatively, using it in the corner. Neville has a kendo stick, but... Oh, Kevin Owens takes the kendo stick away from Neville. And I'm starting to think that this match is very much in the roadhouse for Kevin Owens. And Neville's going to struggle here. But Neville needs to use all of his agility, all of his speed, all of his strengths... To try and knock off Kevin Owens... get too close that corner we'll probably glitch out and end up in, uh, in the middle of the road like four miles away or something like that yeah if you've not seen the Unforgiven pay-per-view I definitely suggest you have a check it out you can find the link in the description below to the uh, the Attitude Era playlist and essentially in the actual elimination chamber uh, in the main event I think it was at one point I believe that Rikishi and Psycho Sid were up on the um, bear in mind it's elimination chamber they're inside of the chamber at one point Rikishi and I think it was Psycho Sid were like up on the top of the Titan Drum. Like, they're not actually on top of the Titan Drum, but actually up at, at, at the top of the stage where people make their entrance. It was, uh, it was pretty insane. Neville now using the ring steps. And Neville showing that he's no stranger to using weaponry. Doing a very good job of it as well. Neville now bringing Kevin Owens back up to his feet now. Straight over them ring steps as well. Now Owens flattening his face on the ground. Throwing Owens back into the ring. There's an elbow to the face there by Neville on Owens. Neville slides back into the ring. Brings Owens back up to his feet. But Owens with that arm drag over the top. Taking Neville down. Now dropping him into a back sent on. Owens. 
Owen to the front chance. We now drop in Neville in a sidewalk slam. Owen's bringing Neville back up to his feet here. I've not seen a lot of actually on this game the pop up the pop up power bomb. That's been a bit, a bit disappointing. And another thing that's quite disappointing is that of course we did have the feud set up for this pay per view of Owens versus Lesnar, and it's uh, it's not gone down too well so far. The uh, the feud got deleted for some reason. The game deleted the feud by itself. So that really annoyed me. And uh, I want to try and still maybe do Lesnar versus Owens at the pay per view. Owens the pop-up powerbomb on Neville and surely that's going to be all the damage that Neville's taken. He's already gone through a table. And no, Neville kicks out. Neville managed to kick out the pop-up powerbomb from Owens. Owens can't believe it. Of course, he's already put him through a table as well. Neville with the Russian leg sweep on Owens. Name for the pity goes again. One, two... It's only a two count. Both guys slowly back up to their feet. Owens with the snap there. And Neville locking in. The headlock now. Doing a great, great job there, actually. Snap there by Owens. Owens now a uh, hook in the arms. We've seen this before. It's the troll. There it is. In for the pin he goes. One, two, and three. And there you go. Owens does pick up the victory now against Neville. It was very hard fought by the pair of them, but the damage that Owens had done to Neville was just a bit too much. Managed to put him through a table early on. Powerbomb him through a table. And then to hit him with a pop-up powerbomb as well. And that was finally was all that he could take. Kevin Owens here, lining Neville up. Here's the pop-up powerbomb. As you can see, it was so close. I was sure this was going to be a free count. It was only so, so close to a free. Owens couldn't believe it himself. He brought Neville straight back up to his feet and then uh, went to try and catch him again with something else, but Neville reversed it into the the Russian legs went for a pin himself, thinking he might be able to try and steal the victory. But again, it was only enough for a two count. Neville gets caught with that big elbow drop by Owens. And Owens brought Neville back up to his feet. And here he is, just locking the arms in with the legs. And there it is. The troll of the package pile driver. The package pile driver is on the game. And I really probably should give it to Kevin Owens. But he doesn't use the package pile driver at the moment. What was that? Or just tried to shoot him, I think. But great win here for Kevin Owens, nonetheless. That's really going to help him out in the rankings for the uh, for the United States and the Intercontinental Championships, and probably even in the uh, the main championship as well, the World Heavyweight and the WWE Championship. The more wins you put together, the higher you're going to be on their rankings. But great win here for Kevin Owens, and uh, maybe championship aspirations next month. Who knows? And here's our next match. It's going to be Tyler Breeze take on the Intercontinental Champion, Daniel Bryan. So here we go. Daniel Bryan, the new Intercontinental Champion, won that belt at our last pay-per-view. Um, which was, of course, Extreme Rules. He won it in a Fatal 4 match against Ziggler, Luke Harper, and Kevin Owens. And I think this might actually be the first time we've seen him since. I might be wrong, but I'm not, you know. This is the first time we've seen Daniel Bryan since then. Of course, he will be defending that belt at our payback pay-per-view. Who that's going to be against, we don't quite know. But I'll tell you what, a win here for uh, for Tyler Breeze would definitely make him the number one contender, I would imagine. That just makes sense to me, anyway. Tyler Breeze now with a Russian leg sweep on Kevin Owens. Daniel 
Jake Ryan definitely taking control of this one at the moment. And you're Bryan with a back elbow on. Tyler Breeze now bringing Breeze into the middle of the ring. And a butterfly suplex into an armbar. He's in firm control at the moment, though. Big, big right hand there by Tyler Breeze, sending the Intercontinental Champion down to the mat, going in for a pin. It's not enough for the three, though. Tyler Breeze now sending Daniel Bryan into the corner. Brian with a big boot to the face of Tyler Breeze. There's Tyler Breeze with a neck breaker there on Daniel Bryan. A massive super there by Tyler Breeze. Like I said, a victory here would make him the number one contender. And it was very, very close to being so as well. Tyler can't believe it, hands on head. Both guys back up to their feet. Daniel Bryan now with a snapmare. Bringing Tyler Breeze back up to his feet. And the big kicks across the chest of Tyler Breeze. And a big boot to the back of the head of Tyler as well. Now rolls him over, in for the pin he goes. One, two. <laughs> Daniel Bryan is twisting the head of Tyler Breeze and sends him back down to the mat. Brings him back up to his feet. And of course, Daniel Bryan has the slight disadvantage because he has a submission finisher. I mean, you know what that's like on this game. Daniel Bryan throwing Tyler Breeze to the outside. What's he looking for here? He, he looks to be lining him up. Is he going to go high risk? Looks like he might be going high risk, you know. Onto the outside, taking Tyler Breeze out. But Daniel Bryan, how much damage has he done to himself there? Quite a chunk by the looks of it. Bryan now bringing... Tyler Breeze back up to his feet and there's some big right hands. Right up on the shoulders, looking for an aeroplane spin. And just dumping Tyler Breeze down. Slides back into the ring. Oh, now what's Daniel Bryan doing? He's had enough high-risk maneuvers already in this match, surely. Now he's up on the top. A big double elbow drop. Breeze throwing back into the ring. Big boot to the side of the head there by, by Daniel Bryan. Bryan now into the ring. And Tyler Breeze has taken some very high impact damage from Daniel Bryan. But how much damage has Bryan done to himself as well doing them big impact moves? Tyler Breeze lining Daniel Bryan up now. What's he got planned? He went for the beauty shot and he completely missed. Well done. Well done, 2K16. You've completely embarrassed Tyler Breeze. Does that use that? No, it doesn't use up his finish. There we go. He does hit the beauty shot now. Goes in for the pin. One, two, and three. And there you go. Tyler Breeze has defeated Daniel Bryan in a non-championship match. And that is going to make Tyler Breeze the number one contender for an Intercontinental Championship. Now, you've got to think that the damage done by Daniel Bryan to himself in some of those high-impact moves was enough to... Um, was enough to give Tyler Breeze the opening he needed. That's pretty insane, actually.
Daniel Bryan, if he'd just uh, if he'd just been a little bit more conservative, then he may have done a little bit better in this situation. But but that's Daniel Bryan, I suppose, isn't it? That's just the way that Daniel Bryan is. And there it was, the beauty shot in for the pin. So Tyler Breeze has gone on to face Daniel Bryan at Payback for the Intercontinental Championship. And this could be Tyler Breeze's first uh, taste of gold in the current day roster. Of course, he is the current NXT television champion, I believe. So it'd be, uh, be great for him to pick up a second belt. So we're going to see Bryan versus Breeze. We need to have a women's championship match as well, don't we? The current champion, Paige, yet to have a number one contender. But maybe that's something we can address next week. And our next match here this evening is going to be the continuation of the feud between the United States champion, Rusev, and Cesaro. So here we go. The Bulgarian brute versus the Swiss Superman. Who's going to come out on top of this match? And who's going to come out on top of the feud? I think whoever comes out on top of the feud is obviously going to be the... Um, He's obviously going to be the uh, the newest, the, or the, 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 the United States champion. That's the words I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. That's just popped up on my screen some news. So I, just, uh, I was a bit, a bit distracted by that. Nothing too important, though. Well, as I say, nothing too important. They believe that uh, they believe that Mike Bennett and Maria should be debuting on TNA tomorrow night. That's uh, a little bit important, I suppose. Be a good signing for TNA might be better actually, and they, um, from what I'm reading, it looks like if they have got him there, they're going to give him a massive push as well and send him straight to the top of the card straight away. That's probably what they need to do because they've lost a lot of top guys recently. Uh, the likes of Austin Aries is gone. I know they brought in guys like Drew Galloway, but I, just, I, I don't know. I don't quite see much depth in the top of the roster there. I'm assuming Abyss has left as well. I don't recall reading anything about Abyss leaving, but I've not seen him in such a long time. That I'm assuming he's gone from TNA now. I was saying that I think he might have actually been part of the um, part of the world title tournament, I believe. I don't, I don't know, actually. Of course, Jeff Hardy's out injured, but there's rumours that both Jeff and Matt Hardy will be leaving pretty soon as well. I think what TNA need to do is they need to go back to their roots and they need to sign up some of the younger, more talented guys from the indie scene and just give them the opportunity. That's what made TNA what it is. They took the cream of the crop from the indie scene and gave them a place where they could be on TV and that's that's what they could still do. And they don't have to sign these people up to, to fix contracts. They could sign them up to open contracts, give them a trial and the ones that end up being pretty good, then you can start signing up on a fixed contract and things like that. And that's, uh, that's I think, what TNA should be doing. There's fantastic guys on the indie scene. They've used a few of them recently. Don't get me wrong. They've used uh, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee and people like that. But they need to do more of that. I think they need to they need to make people like that like permanent members of the roster because those two alone would be absolutely incredible additions to the X division. Cesaro slides back into the ring. Referee's up to a six count. Rusev needs to make it back in, or does he? He doesn't need to make it back in. If he doesn't make it back in, he'll lose the match. But bit in fairness to him he might end up uh, saving himself for another day who knows might be the best way Rusev now rolling being rolled over there by Cesaro now Cesaro locking in an armbar Cesaro catches Rusev now into the front chancery hoists him up and slams him down into the scoop slam Cesaro rolling Rusev over and a big clubbing blow across the back of the man and just rubbing his face into the mat as well. Big elbow drop to the back there by Cesaro now bringing Rusev back up to his feet once again. Sends him into the corner. Rusev caught the leg and tripping Cesaro now and looks to turn him over into a Boston Crab. The United States champion has... He's number one contender, Cesaro, locked in that Boston Crab. Cesaro out of nowhere with that massive European uppercut. Taking Rusev down, brings him 
back into the middle of the ring. In for the Pingo Cesaro. One, two. It's only enough for a two count. Rusev kicked out. Cesaro now just twisting the head of Rusev. And slamming it into the mat as well. And Cesaro just stomping on different body parts, just trying to wear all of Rusev down, which is probably quite a clever move. Rusev went for that big kick and just missed. But he does finally hit the massive kick. Cesaro's down. One, two, and Cesaro kicks out. Cesaro there with a big German suplex on Rusev. Rolls him over. And now locking in the armbar. Rusev fights free. Big clubbing blow across the back of Cesaro. Now bringing Cesaro back up and launches him over the top of his head. Dropping him down to the mat hard. Rusev now putting Cesaro against the ropes and sending him over the top. And Rusev joining Cesaro on the outside. Now what's Rusev got planned here? Hooks the head. Oh, and it's a spiked DDT on the apron. And that's the, that's the most hardest part of the ring. There's the least amount of spring at that part of the ring. Rusev now just launching Cesaro over the top of his head. Cesaro drops down and hits the ground hard. Rusev brings Cesaro back up to his feet. He's up to a four count now. Rusev now beating Cesaro down in that corner. Referee's up to a six count and Rusev slides back in and Cesaro's still down. Is Rusev trying to plan to win this one by count out? Referee giving Cesaro a few extra seconds there, I think. And it's enough time for Cesaro to make his way back into the ring. There's the snapmare by Rusev. And now locking in the uh, the headlock here on Cesaro. Cesaro with a couple of big elbows. And then out of nowhere, another European uppercut. Sending Rusev up into the air and dropping him down onto it. That could be all one, two. And no, Rusev kicks out again. Very impressive by these two. Really showing they've got a lot in the locker. This is going to be a great match when it comes to it, a payback for the United States Championship. Pump handle drop there by Rusev in for the pin. And he's won it. Rusev picks up the victory with that. He'd be very happy with that win. And you can't blame him. So Rusev, the United States Champion, picks up a victory over his number one contender, in the form of Cesaro. There's that big European uppercut by Cesaro. Pulls Rusev back into the middle of the ring. Into the pin. It was not enough though. That, I think that was the first of the European uppercuts. Cesaro now just stamping on the, the arm and the knee of Rusev. couple of big elbows there by Cesaro on Rusev and there's the massive European uppercut I thought that was going to be it that was the second of the European uppercuts but it was not enough to finish him off so close though and then Rusev back up to his feet and I think Cesaro might have just taken his uh just taken his mind off the game quickly as Rusev catched him here with this pump handle drop and that was enough to keep Cesaro down for the one, the two, and the three count. So a great win here for Rusev over the number one contender, Cesaro. And is this the scene we're going to see at two weeks' time in payback as well? We'll have to wait and see. Or we could have a brand new United States champion. There's many different eventualities that could happen. 
and here is our rivalry update. New number one contender. Cesaro has been named the number one contender after a strong showing in a non-title match against Rusev. Okay, Rusev did win the match, but okay, I'll, I'll get where they're coming from. Rusev has now gained himself a hot streak. He's become slightly more prideful and slightly more disrespectful. And Cesaro is on a cold streak, not the position he wants to be in. He's become more prideful, more bold, and more disrespectful from that one. Was that, I'm not quite sure. I think the red arrow means... Yeah, I think the red arrow means becomes more into the red, I think. But there you go. Great win for Rusev. Here is our next match this evening. It's going to be Randy Orton taking on Sheamus. And, of course, Seth Rollins will be at ringside. So here we go. Seth Rollins and Sheamus taking the night away from Roman Reigns here this evening, allowing the other members of the authority, Kane and the Big Show, to do the dirty work. A big right hand there by Sheamus. Randy Orton's not happy with that at all. So, yeah, Sheamus and uh, Seth Rollins taking the night away from her. Uh, from Roman Reigns, but I'm sure they'll have their eyes glued on the screen later on because we know if Roman Reigns and his mystery partner, we don't know who that's going to be yet, we know if they defeat uh, Kane and Big Show, then um, then Seth Rollins will have to defend his World Heavyweight Championship against Roman Reigns at the upcoming Payback pay-per-view. You see Randy Orton there descending. Sheamus over the top of his shoulders. Randy Orton now just twisting the head of Sheamus. Let's be careful, he doesn't want to ruin the Mohican. Big right hand there by Sheamus. Sheamus just slamming the head of Randy Orton into the mat. Big kick to the back as well. Sheamus brings Orton back up to his feet again. Another big kick to the back. And stamping on the middle of the back of Randy Orton as well. Now rolls him over. Brings him back up to a seated position. Another big kick to the back. Sheamus is probably one of the stiffer workers out there in the WWE at the moment. I I'm still dubious about him. I still think that he's a bit... He's a bit too rough, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one who actually injured Daniel Bryan as well, because he, he had a match with Daniel Bryan. I think it was on SmackDown. It was one of Daniel Bryan's... Is it, no, it was one of Sheamus' first match back, or one of Daniel Bryan's first matches back. And Sheamus was just so rough with him, and he was... He hit some really dangerous-looking moves, and uh, I'm talking sort of K... Is it, is it K Faber? But yeah, he, he just hit a few moves that looked far too dangerous. He was dropping him at very funny angles and Daniel Bryan was doing his best to try and land properly and then we haven't seen Daniel Bryan since they've said he got injured but they've not said where he got injured so I'm not sure if they're trying to claim he was injured in the gym or just injured generally but that match against Sheamus can't have helped it was only shortly after Wrestlemania Sheamus now throwing Randy Orton over the top rope joins him on the outside and what Sheamus got planned here we've already seen him taking Dean Ambrose out a few weeks back outside the ring and he's trying to take Randy Orton out of the equation as well. Maybe there's the big DDT on the apron. Sheamus now just beating Randy Orton on the outside. Now a big suplex on the outside as well. Sheamus continues the assault on the outside. Referees up to a five count as both guys make their way back into the ring, but Randy Orton's back up on his feet. I don't think Sheamus really, really noticed that. And now Orton catching Sheamus with that Saito suplex. Sheamus had just thrown Orton over the top of his shoulders. Big boots to the back of Randy Orton as well. Sheamus now with a very loose fallaway slam, launching Randy Orton across the across the ring, and Sheamus is really starting to dominate this match now, showing why the authority put their uh, their money behind him to become the newest member. Randy Orton with a big. Right hand to the gut of Sheamus and now into a short DDT. 
brought Sheamus down hard onto his face there. Another big short DDT on, on Sheamus. He's dropping the elbow onto the face of Sheamus as well there, Randy Orton. Slamming the arm of Sheamus into the mat. Sheamus now with the angle slam there on uh, sorry, being, Sheamus being caught by the angle slam there by Randy Orton. Randy Orton slowly back up to his feet and Seth Rollins has not had much of an influence in this match so far. I'm not saying Seth Rollins is not interested in it, but I think Seth has seemed a little bit more in... Oh, here we go. Now Seth Rollins up on the apron, distracting Randy Orton when he needed to. Obviously picking his moment in the match. I was about to say he's looked a lot more interested when Sheamus was facing off against the likes of Roman Reigns when Sheamus was facing off against the likes of uh, uh, Dean Ambrose a couple of weeks back. Sheamus with a big right hand. The face of Randy Orton, and it looks like the, the distraction there by Seth Rollins might be enough to, uh, to really take Randy Orton out. Now Randy gets caught with the Celtic Cross. That's the, I forgot that was called there for a second. The Celtic Cross by Sheamus. We don't often see him use that anymore. In, uh, in real wrestling. He usually goes to the bro kick now. But there you go. Randy Orton kicks out. Very interesting indeed. Sheamus with a big boot to the back of Orton. Orton with a big boot to the side of the face of Sheamus now. Sheamus big boot again. Sending Sheamus to the outside there, Orton. Sheamus sending Orton flat on his back. Bringing him back up to his feet. Straight into the ring steps. Sheamus doing his best to try and take another top superstar out here. Being very dangerous here on the outside, but it's that Orton maybe playing possum there and caught Sheamus with the arm drag. Orton slides back into the ring and it's referee up to a six count. Both guys back in the ring now. Orton takes Sheamus up and drops him down in the suplex. Sheamus slowly trying to get back up to his feet. Orton stalking. Big clubbing blow across the back. Sheamus slowly makes his way back up to his feet, but Orton's there with that backbreaker on Sheamus. Orton bringing Sheamus back up to his feet, but there's Sheamus again with that backdrop of his own. And Orton slides out the ring wisely. Seth Rollins throws him straight back in, though. And now Sheamus locking in the cloverleaf. And the referee does a fantastic job of standing in the way. But I think Orton does manage to meet the ropes. Big kick to the back there by Sheamus. Now rolling Randy Orton over. Orton trying to get back up to his feet, but Sheamus caught him in a boot to the back. Now Sheamus with some big clubbing blows to the side of the face. And I'll tell you what, this episode seems to be going a, a bit longer than normal. We still have our main event to come this evening, another tag team match. Sheamus there with that big backbreaker. Could that be all? Sheamus going in for the pin. That could be all. One, two, and three. And there you go. Sheamus does pick up the victory over Randy Orton. Another successive victory for Sheamus as well. And now, like I said, both these guys are going to be very keenly staring at the monitor backstage now. Who is it going to be that teams at Roman Reigns, or has Roman Reigns been able to find a partner? He might not have been able to find a partner. And of course, Roman Reigns and his partner, if he has one, will be taking on the team of Kane and the Big Show. Of course, the team of the, of the authority. And if Roman Reigns and his partner can win that match, then Roman Reigns will get an opportunity at Seth Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship at Payback. There was a Celtic cross there by Sheamus. I thought I was convinced that was going to be it, to tell the honest truth. But evidently, I was incorrect. It was not enough. 
We see Sheamus now bringing Randy Orton back up to his feet and just takes him up and drops him. I want to say that's the Irish Curse backbreaker. I'm not 100% sure that my mind's a little bit blank, but that's what I want to say it is. I just bit my tongue while I'm saying that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was, and that's enough for the free count. So well done to Sheamus, another successive victory. I say successive victory, I think he actually lost last week to Roman He did lose last week to Roman Reigns, but he defeated Dean Ambrose in uh, week number one. He lost to, uh, to Roman Reigns last week, and uh, this week he's managed to defeat Randy Orton. So coming up next, we're going to get straight into the entrances, because obviously if you see the matchup screen, it's going to spoil who the mystery partner is. But we're going to get straight into the entrances right now. And here we are with our main... And here come the authority. It's Corporate Kane and the Big Show. And they have sort of uh, bigged themselves up this evening. Uh, basically to such a point where Sheamus and Seth Rollins have become confident enough to uh, to walk out and leave the arena. They've gone out to celebrate their, uh, their mutual wins over the last few weeks. Of course, we've not actually seen Seth Rollins wrestle once yet this month. It's all been him just managing the new member of the authority, Sheamus. So, uh, yeah, these two guys are fairly confident they can beat Roman Reigns. Nobody, I can't imagine many people wanting to get involved with this rivalry against the authority. So, it'll be interesting to see who Roman Reigns' tag team partner is going to be, if anyone. I must apologise. My, It's been about six hours since I recorded the last match. I've been out and had a bit of dinner and... Uh, I've had six pints of beer as well, so I'm a little bit... It's going to be a little bit more interesting, I think, this uh, this match. As Roman Reigns does make his way down to the ring now, it's going to be interesting. Will he have a partner here? And, of course, remember the stipulation for this match. If Roman Reigns and his partner, if he has a partner managed to win this match against the authorities Kane and Big Show then uh, Roman Reigns will get an opportunity at Seth Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship at Payback so that's the way we're looking at the moment does Roman Reigns have somebody waiting in the wings to come and help him out or will he be going solo here this evening that's going to be the, in it's going to be the interesting question to try and see We're going to find out right now. Roman Reigns is looking fairly confident, though. I must admit, he's looking very confident. So, you would imagine he might have something up his sleeve. Oh, it's it's, it's Dean Ambrose. We, I'm pretty sure he's not been cleared to wrestle yet. He, he got his head. Big booted against the ring post a couple of weeks back by Sheamus. We know he's been out with concussion. We, we didn't think he'd be back this quickly, but he is here to back up his, his brother, Roman Reigns, here. And Dean Ambrose looks like he's here for business. Very interesting. Dean Ambrose making his return here this evening. Oh, this is going to be very interesting indeed. The crowd absolutely love it. It's the authority versus Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. Now, of course, if Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose manage to win this match, then Roman Reigns will go on to face Seth Rollins at the pay-per-view. Payback coming up next weekend. Kane and Big Show have been very much bigging up their uh, very much bigging up their chances of winning this match all evening. However, they were assuming it was going to be a 2 one match, I must admit. And now Dean Ambrose making his return here is uh, it's quite amazing. We were not expecting this at all. Ambrose now the front chancery on Kane. I'm pretty sure Ambrose will be looking for some retribution against Sheamus as well maybe that could be another potential match for payback we'll have to wait and see what happens on that one there's the running bulldog there by Dean Ambrose on Kane and you'd have to think that if 
if Kane and Big Show do not win this match, then what what will that have for the future of them to in the authority? They've they've really bigged up their chances of winning this one. They've uh, they've sort of told Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and Seth Rollins they've got this one in the bag. But like I said, I'm pretty sure they were not expecting to be against Dean Ambrose. Everyone thought Dean Ambrose was still going to be out for a few more weeks with this really bad concussion. Like I said, he did get a big boot to the side of the head against the ring post only a couple of weeks ago. And of course, you can see that video. Just to check back on the playlist. It was week number one of this month. So probably two episodes ago, it was the main event. Big Show now sending Dean Ambrose against that. Ropes brings him back. Big Show got planned here, just sending Dean Ambrose over the top. And with Dean Ambrose with the concussion, a big drop on the back of his head like that is not going to be helpful for him. Big Show again bringing Ambrose back up to his feet. But Ambrose catches Big Show with that dragon screw. Lovely move. And in comes Roman Reigns into the equation. The Big Show a massive punch to the stomach. And there's a clothesline as well on Roman Reigns. And a, just a boot raking across the face of Reigns. Now, I'm pretty sure Reigns would love to get the opportunity to go for the World Heavyweight Championship at Payback. Big Show, they have a spear on Roman Reigns. In for the pin he goes. One. It's only a one count. Roman Reigns kicks out. Now, Big Show. The big clubbing blow across the side of the head of Roman Reigns. Very painful move now, Big Show. Looks to be lining Roman Reigns up. And there's a big KO punch. Is that going to be all? No, Roman Reigns kicks out once again. Very interesting clubbing blow across the back of Roman Reigns. Now sending Reigns into the corner. Big boots the face there by Reigns on. Big Show, that's a reverse DDT. And Roman Reigns brings Dean Ambrose into the equation. The Big Show taking Ambrose straight up, but Ambrose reversing into that reverse DDT. Lovely move by Ambrose. Big clubbing blow across the back of the Big Show once again. Sending Big Show off that rope. And there's the the arm drag, great arm drag that is by, by Dean Ambrose. Ambrose bringing Big Show back up to his feet. And there's a big elbow. And now Ambrose looking to bring in his tag team partner, Roman Reigns. Now these two guys, of course, two of the founding members of the Shield alongside Seth Rollins. Seth was the one who turned on them almost a year ago now. And I must admit, a lot of people didn't want to see the end of the Shield, but really, it's it's really put all three of these guys a bit higher up in the card. I think Dean Ambrose has struggled a bit more than the other two, of course, and Dean Ambrose is the end. I, I honestly thought that Dean Ambrose would be the first one out of the three to become the champion, and it turns out that Dean Ambrose is going to be the last out of the three. But I'm sure Dean Ambrose at some point will be able to hold the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, of course, in the, uh, in the real wrestling. I was looking today, actually, on the... On, on the Paddy Power website for the odds of the winner of Royal Rumble. Roman Reigns is quite far down, but of course he's not going to be in it, is he? That's why he's going to be in the championship match. I think Dean Ambrose is actually second or third favourite to win it. I think the favourite to win, of course, is Brock Lesnar. There's the big spear there by Roman Reigns. As he just got himself a championship match at payback. In for the pin he goes. One... And Kane is across quickly. Dean Ambrose just couldn't get there in time. Big Show now the front chance on Roman Reigns. Now into a bear hug he goes. Roman Reigns reverses it into a DDT. Lovely move by Reigns. Now bringing Big Show back up to his feet, and there's a neck breaker. Reigns now going for the pin. One. This time Dean Ambrose does take Kane out, but it's only enough for a two count. Roman Reigns, like I said, fighting to get himself a championship match at payback. And so far, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose 
are firmly controlling this match. Got to be a good beer in a record, can you? Reigns now bringing Big Show back up to his feet. And there's another Superman punch. In for the pin he goes again. One. Two. Oh, Kane does a great job there of avoiding. Dean Hambro sort of took him on a runaround. Big Show's been busted open as well. I didn't even notice that happen, but that's going to be a bit more difficult for Big Show now. The longer this match goes, the more he's going to bleed out, and the more difficult it's going to come for him. Big Show is crushing Roman Reigns in the corner. And a big stamp on the back of the arm of Reigns as well. Big Show brings Reigns back up to his feet. And sends him into the corner. And how long can Big Show go on like this? I think he needs to make the tag out to Kane at some point. Big Show bringing Randy Orton back onto the top turnbuckle. Now locking him into the tree of woe. But Roman Reigns straight away breaking out of it. Big right hand to the stomach of Big Show. And now just cutting Big Show down. Now Roman brings in Dean Ambrose. Ambrose, of course, the fresher of the two men. Ambrose is going up top. What's he planning here? Big Show trying to roll away from the corner. Doesn't quite have the energy to go far enough. Big diving fist drop there by Dean Ambrose. In for the pin he goes. One. Two. And Kane again is there just in time. And Kane has saved Big Show's skin so many times here this evening. Right to the eyes by Dean Ambrose. As Roman Reigns looks to suplex Kane back into the ring. Dean Ambrose with a tornado DDT. Kane is down. Ambrose now rolling Big Show over. Couple of big punches to the side of the head of the Big Show. A great move there by Dean Ambrose. Almost like an STF, but slightly verified. Verified? Varied? Varied is the word. Yeah, varied and verified is completely different words. That's, that's the beer talking. I do apologise. Dean Ambrose with a pin now. Oh, that was so close to free count. Kane barely got there on the scratch of free. I do like to do drunken recordings every now and again. This is not drunken, though. I've only had six pints, so it's not anywhere near drunken. Anymore. Ambrose is lining Big Show up here. This could be... This could be it, you know. Although he's quite close to the corner of Kane. Kane turns his back. He did not want to see that. Now for the pin. And Kane is stood right there. He's going to be able to break this up again. And he does. And it, it, at the moment, it only seems like a matter of time before Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns manage to finish the Big Show off. Big Show really needs to make a tag. But Kane is, is just not allowing them to get the pin at this point in time. Dean Ambrose now. Big boot to the chest, sending Kane back down once again. That's the Big Show. Bringing Big Show back up to his feet now. Clothesline. Almost like Kazuchika Okada's clothesline, that Rainmaker clothesline. Roman Reigns back into the ring now. Dean Ambrose making the tag. Reigns the big kick to the gut of the Big Show. Big Show's really struggling here. And now Reigns looks to be lining him up. Where's Reigns? I thought Reigns was going to go for a spear then, but he went straight across the ring and went to the outside of Big Show, just KO punched him off the apron, and Big Show finally makes the tag into Kane. That's what he needed to do. And Big Show and Kane together just taking Roman Reigns off that top turnbuckle, but Dean Ambrose is straight across the ring and taking Kane out with the bulldog from behind. Roman Reigns mentioned to glitch the Big Show straight into the ring with that right hand. Now Kane dropping to the outside. And Kane just taking Dean Ambrose off the apron now as well. And the referee has lost all control of this one. But Kane has not necessarily done the best thing here because he sort of put himself in, in the middle of uh, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. Reigns now throwing Kane back into the ring and there's a big elbow to the face. 
Wayne slides back in now as well. And Big Show looks to be really out there on the side, Brian's. Roman Reigns with a big kick to the gut of Kane. And I can't help but draw parallels, you know, between Roman Reigns and The Rock. Now, I said this to my friend the other day, and he, he started off by disagreeing with me, but I'll get back into this in a second. Roman Reigns with a pin after the spear, and there you go. Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose do pick up the victory over the authority. And there you go. Roman Reigns is going to get himself a shot at Seth Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship at payback in a couple of weeks' time. The authority, and especially Seth Rollins, is not going to be very happy about this result at all. Kane and Big Show are sure that they had this one sorted to the point where Sheamus and Seth Rollins left the arena to go and celebrate. And Roman Reigns managed to bring back Dean Ambrose, who we all thought was still going to be on the injury table. Dean Ambrose made his return here this evening and helps his big man Roman Reigns to pick up the victory and to get that championship match at payback. So yeah, like I was just saying, I can't help but draw parallels between the careers of Roman Reigns and The Rock. Remember back to about 97, 98, The Rock was making his debut and they pushed him so hard as a face that the crowd rejected him. And after a lot of hard work, eventually he ended up becoming a super face. And at the moment, they pushed Rain so hard the fans rejected him. And now they've started to slow that push down a little bit and they've, they've leveled it out to a decent level. And now all of a sudden... The fans are standing. I know there's some fans that are still not with uh, Roman Reigns at all, but I think he's starting to turn people now. And there you go. That's the spear that finished off Dean Ambrose across the ring. Took Big Shot, and you see Roman Reigns very, very happy there with Dean Ambrose making his return. Was Dean Ambrose actually medically cleared to wrestle here this evening? That's going to be the main question, but it doesn't matter. We now know that Roman Reigns is going to face Seth Rollins at payback for the World Heavyweight Championship. And we also know that Dean Ambrose has returned after that attack by Sheamus during their match. And I'm pretty sure Sheamus versus Dean Ambrose should happen at payback as well. Well, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you have all enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, be sure to slap that like button. It does help me out a lot. Makes the video easier to find for other people as well, of course. And if you're new around here, then be sure to subscribe as well for a lot more WWE 2K16 footage. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all next time.